started off the coast of California. Like I was saying, Pepper was rescued off the coast of California when she was one year old and joined our sea lion sorority in September of 2015. So you can see the difference a year makes when it comes to training, as Pepper is already trained on several techniques without the use of that target pole. <laughs> but finally, we have Sunshine sitting right here to my right with Brittany. And she is a six year old California sea lion who was rescued off the coast of California when she was just a pup back in the summer of 2010. So she was raised right here at the Kansas City Zoo. Now, before we get the show started, our girls do have pet peeves. And it's being called a seal. That's right, they are all loud and proud California sea lions. But don't worry, ladies, we'll teach them the three major differences between seals and sea lions together. The first difference has to do with how they move through the water. Seals will use their back flippers to get around down under. We'll see lions, like our girls, use their powerful front flippers to swim. Those flippers are so strong. They can actually support their entire body weight. There we go, their entire body weight. The next major difference between seals and sea lions has to do with their ears. Can I get everyone to touch your ears for me? Go ahead and touch your ears. Just like you, sea lions have external ear flaps, whereas seals have tiny little pinholes that lead to their inner ear. Now the third and final difference between seals and sea lions has to do with how they get around outside of the water. As you can see, sea lions are really great at moving around on land because they can use their back flippers to walk and run. Seals, however, can't use their back flippers that way. So they scooch around on their tummy like an inchworm. That's a pretty sealy impression, ladies. Now I'm sure some of you are wondering how we train behaviors. Here at the Kansas City Zoo, we use a method of training called positive reinforcement. This means if a trainer asks a sea lion for a behavior, and the sea lion performs that behavior correctly, then they get a reward. Now you'll notice I did say ask and not tell. We don't force our animals to do anything. Every behavior begins by learning with a target pole. That's the white stick with the red and white ball on the end of it. Sea lions are asked to touch their nose to the end of the pole, and when they do, they hear a whistle, which means they have performed that behavior directly and can expect a reward soon. Eventually, the sea lion can perform the behavior with only a gesture, just like our girls can now. Thank you so much to our trainers. As you can see, the relationship between trainer and sea lion is a very important one because our trainers have worked hard to establish trust between themselves and the sea lions. It's a very special bond. Now, a key component of that positive reinforcement is the reward. Here at the Kansas City Zoo, we participate with the Monterey Bay Aquarium and their seafood watch program. This ensures that all of our animals are fed with fish that have been responsibly fished in the park. But you don't have to be a sea lion to eat fish responsibly. For those of you with a smartphone, there's a free app you can download. Simply called the Seafood Watch app. Or you can also stop by over here to pick up a free Seafood Watch pocket guide. These tools give you the power to make responsible choices and help to save our oceans. <laughs> Now, even though they are called California sea lions, in the wild, they would actually range from Mexico all the way up to British Columbia, Canada. Living in the Pacific Ocean can be quite treacherous, as there are several predators these girls would need to watch out for. Our ladies are giving you a hint as to what that predator might be. Shout it out 